Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Classy Reptiles, and today we're going to talk about box turtle care. This is my eastern box turtle Goliath, and I'm them free roam in the yard. But right now, let's talk about one of the points when you're new to them. It's hibernation. Should I, should I not? Well, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter, because I know people on my forum that I was talking about last video, they know people that don't hibernate their turtles and they do just fine. They're healthy and they breed and everything else. Also, also, um, uh, shoot, hibernation is good for them though because it simulates natural, like they're in their natural environment. Um, but it's really up to you what you do for them. But next, we're going to talk about food. Um, typically what I feed my box turtle is, my box turtles, is, um, mustard greens, collard greens, romaine lettuce, mealworms, earthworms, and banana. They love banana. Don't ask me why. But I just learned it on a food chart looking for good things to feed them. But, go on the internet and you can come up with your own diets and stuff. And that's the one I came up with for my, most of my turtles. Um, it's very good for them, in my opinion, and... You should try to come up with your own diet that will fit the needs for basically all your turtles, water, terrestrial, land, just whatever, you know. Okay. Next, um, we're going to talk about, like, what type of place you're supposed to keep them in. Some people try to put them in, like, glass tanks and stuff. No, do not do that. They will get depressed, and they will not do good and get sick and die on you. Well, they will live, but they won't do well. And I've seen it before, so people that say you can't keep them in there, they're wrong. Um, they need outdoor space. Outdoor space is like this, guys. Like this. And mine's not up because it's almost winter time. And mine's going to be about 4 feet by 6 feet, which gives them plenty of space to do what they want. And you can customize what you want for them too also. Next, um, I keep mine during the winter for hibernation in plastic tubs. Mine's like a 40 gallon tub and it's really nice. And they can do well in there for like the cooler months of the year. And that's what I do. And next, um, we're going to talk about how to like to tell if they're male or female. Okay. He is a male. He's a male. He's really, he's really tame. He's getting ticked off because I was messing with him earlier. But as you can see, they have red eyes. Um, most generally males will have those. And also you can tell by their plastron, by like the shape of it. And also their tail and cloaca, which is right there. Generally females um, And also the indent right there. That's why I meant on the plastron um, Usually males the best way you can tell and easiest way by their eyes It's not a hundred percent sure, but it's like an 80 or a 90 chance. That's a male but That's how you sex them next thing Excuse me, I'm sick. Um, next thing, what usually, um, how high your enclosure should be. Your enclosure should be at least uh, a shell length and a half of it. So they won't climb out or escape because they can climb very good. Because you don't want them to, you don't want to lose them. Um, next thing, you need a have for eastern box turtles um is a <clears throat> like a mesh wiring over top of your enclosure outside because of predators raccoons and stuff will try to attack them but i don't have that problem thank the lord and most generally that's you know what you need to put over but um but here for a minute, I'm gonna let, let you guys watch him free room there. Um, he likes to explore and dig a lot. Oh, yeah, that brings me to another point when you do hibernate them in tubs, 
they have to have at least eight inches of soil, no fertilizers, no chemicals in it, natural soil, and leaf litter and moss for hydration for them to hibernate and do well. Because eight inches is like the safe side. They do dig down in the ground when they hibernate, and it's best for them to have that stuff in it. As you can see, he's just fooling around. But also next um, thing we're going to talk about is um, where you find them most generally, like what area. I've had many people ask me on my form, like where do you find them and all that. And well, the best place to find them is in the woods in the eastern part of our state. They most generally run down to like Tennessee-ish to New York or so. Don't hold me to that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's like the most general area you're going to find them. But do not take them if you get them out of the, if you see them in the wild because they're becoming harder to find because of people building houses and taking their their land and and that's and also you usually find them after a good rain like they like their humidity up so after it rains is a really good time because they're really active during that time and it's during daylight hours they're not nocturnal or anything for people that do not know that and that's where you find them the best. Uh, most generally, just you'll stumble upon them if you spend enough time in the woods. Like the other day, I was out in the woods squirrel hunting, and I found at least three, two or three, I think. But you know, they're getting ready for winter, and everybody, and so is in every other animal. But this is the general run through of Eastern box turtle care videos. Um, I will be posting more regularly whenever I hit about my 20 subscribers. Um, right now I'm at 7, but I just made a new account. Um, but anyways, just subscribe, um, comment below, and add stuff that I missed. This is just a quick rundown of them. I can do a longer video next time if you guys would like me to. Just comment, um, add me on YouTube, and also just subscribe to me, please. And... I'll talk to you later, and here is my box turtle glide, and we'll see him in a couple other videos, like what to put in your tub and stuff, and that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys.